Stephanie. Over Thanksgiving Day break, I really contemplated my portfolio and this presentation. I searched for a three ring binder all over my house and I came up with two. One was white and had big scratches and gouges in it, um, had a giant picture of a squirrel on the front of it. The second one, I had already spent so much time painstakingly organizing it for my nonprofit group that I couldn't even conceive of popping it open and ripping the pages out. So when Doug asked me if I would join him on a trip to Office Depot, I was like, all right, let's do it. I'm going to go in, I'm going to grab myself a binder, I'm going to leave, everything's going to be set. Well, when I got there, all I saw was plastic. And as this class knows, I have a real problem with plastic. In addition to that, I didn't find anything that popped out, anything that had true personality. So I decided to do what I always decide to do. I decided to make my own. Today I'm going to share the process of making my portfolio and also what it contains. It has personality, to say the least. So whenever you start out a project, the most important thing to do is to come up with a plan of action. Generally, you can come, out, come up with all of your snafus at once, figure out how you're going to deal with them, get all the engineering out of the way. So I started by making a plan. The second thing that I did was I got all my materials together. We're doing this again. I'm going to stand over here. Here I have my pencil, my ruler, my measuring tape, a clamp, a circular sander, and a skill saw. Because you're not able to, Gwendolyn's face, what? <laughs> um, because you're not able to cut a straight line with a skill saw, and I unfortunately don't have a table saw, and no matter how many times I ask for one, this is what I chose to use. My measurements were nine and a half inches by 12 inches. To make it give an illusion of being somewhat even, I went ahead and took it, clamped both of the pieces down, and then sanded the edges of them so that, again, it appeared to be even, though you would measure them and find out they weren't. Then it came time for staining it. I completely sanded my two pieces of wood, and in addition to that, I went ahead and put in my holes. I've got three holes that I put for my three ring, and then two additional holes here and here. They're very small, you can barely see them, but those are for my latching mechanism. Up on the top left, you'll see I have gloves, my stain, a piece of white cloth to apply the stain, and a detail brush. At the age of 19, I was given the nickname Safety Stephanie. Safety is incredibly important to me, so I did this in my spare bedroom with the window completely open, even though that's when we had the coldest weather that we've had this year so far. And even with the window open, the stain was so noxious, the fumes were overwhelming. Lacquer and varnish, not so much a problem. Stain, a problem, just FYI. Next came the most important step in the entire process. Picking out what kind of music I was going to listen to. Now, I decided to go <laughs> with more of an 80s uh, hair metal bands, but not too much. So I chose Cinderella. As you can see, I have my gloves on. Safety first. <laughs> From there, I began staining, going along with the grain. After I finished staining, I went ahead and put on two coats of a satin varnish. Once that was done, I, for the front alone, I sanded down and put a glossy on the front as well to give it just a little more oomph. These are my two pieces complete, stained, lacquered. This is my hinge. It's just black canvas material. Very simple, the same thing that you would use if you were into watercolor or doing any kind of a hinge with a very delicate example, <laughs> a very delicate project. You want to do a very light hinge, so I used Gorilla Glue and applied the glue along the edges. Then I used Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford, third edition, as my weight. It had girth. I used that, but I only put it on for a half hour because Gorilla Glue expands, so I wanted to make sure that it didn't stick to the book. It's a pricey book. Then I sat it in front of the fire so that it could dry. It has been sitting in front of the fire now for the last, what, two weeks? So it'll be interesting to see what my living room looks like without it in there. Then came the latching mechanism. Oh, no, 
not the latching, latching, latching mechanism at all. I decided to use some bolts, some stop nuts, and some washers as the means to secure the pages in my portfolio. I used two inch long quarter inch bolts. These are the stop nuts. That means that it won't go all the way down onto the bolt and thus pinch the paper. And then my washers, of course. Then I came up with the latching mechanism. I grabbed a piece of wood. We went walking at Point Defiance. I grabbed a piece of wood, wrapped it in some wire, did some little wire work on it, nothing fancy. Then took a piece of ribbon and put some beads on it. The finished product looks like this. Oh, wow. I love that. I had undone it because I had to get my CD out of the back of it, but this is the finished product. Inside of my portfolio, there are my stop washers, or my stop nuts, rather. I wish, in hindsight, that I had glued the bolts in, just so it was a little bit easier. But I like the fact that there's extra room so that it is easy to go through it. The contents of my portfolio. As you can see, I try to keep it as simple as possible. For me, it's really important. The administrative part of it is incredibly important. So I've just got clear binder tabs, nothing special. In addition to that, under the, the speeches section of it, I went ahead and put little flags next to the individual speeches so that they were easier to thumb through. Now, if you notice, my tabs go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we've only had seven speeches. Well, I decided, because we spent so much time working on our chapter three speech, for King and Rosary, <laughs> to go ahead and add it in here as well. So I went ahead and put that one in there too, the speech that never was. In addition to that, I also put in my, my extras, which was going to be a giant smiley face once it was on the board. It was going to be very, very fancy. I also, as you can see, decided to embellish a little bit with the design. This is Adam Ant. He is incredibly important to me. He's a singer from the late 70s and has been an incredibly important figurehead in my life. This is actually a handmade stamp that Doug made for me two Hanukkahs ago. Each chapter has Mr. Adam on it, like so. And on the back, another stamp. This one says, I heart tofu because I do, I love it. And the second one is this little guy here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a little stinky onion with an angry face. <laughs> His name is Onion, and he comes from one of my favorite tournament games, Bubble Bobble. <laughs> love Bubble Bobble. In addition to putting Adam on there, I decided to put lyrics to some of Adam's songs as well. And then I decided to make a PowerPoint presentation of the lyrics because I love Adam so much. <laughs> First lyric, don't you ever, don't you ever stop being dandy, showing me your handsome, from Prince Charming. There are no boxes for us, the ones you love to hate, so read on, which is about the English press. Be pretty, look young, be fearless, like the scorpion. A woman's wrath hath no man, and this all men must fear. My only books were women's looks, the more I read, the less I said. I've always loved that one. I want those who get to know me to become my admirers or my enemies, from friend or foe. And even though you fool your soul, your conscience will be mine, all mine, from stand and deliver. And my favorite, see a nation on its knees and its heritage dead, see a nation needing civilization like a hole in the head. So now you're trying it on me, but I'm aware of the plan to save the man you have to kill the Indian by simply shaking his hand. That was off of the 1978 album, Dirk Wears White Socks, from the album Kick. And last but not least, I wanted a little bit of my humor. We had talked about in class about LOL cats, laugh out loud cats. So I decided to add my favorite LOL cat of all time. Oh girl, hold on, are those shoes on sale? Oh. <laughs> God, I love that cat. Did I kill you? I know so many people like that. Okay. <laughs> As you've witnessed throughout our quarter together, I don't really know how to do things easily. When I was explaining the design to Doug, I also had the idea of pressing leaves together to make the page dividers. His response to that was, or you could buy a binder and some tabs. <laughs>
But even though it seems like a lot, as I explained, it was easy to assemble, and the contents were organized simplistically. But this binder summed up my entire class experience. It was time-consuming, challenged my skills, and was really, really super-duper fun. Thank you all for making it a cherished memory.